Our next topic in the React Native series is going to be fetch, how, how you can do API calls from React Native. You want to go out to an API, get some data, bring it back and display it. How do we do that? Well, um, I'm going to show you. So we have here a simple component with a piece of text and a button inside of it. So I imported button so I could add the button. The on press event is going to call this function get data. Now I have a couple of options here. When I'm doing API calls, I can either wait for the user to do something like on press or inside the component did mount. This is the perfect time to fetch your data. So if you put your data call inside of its own function, which is a best practice, this is how you should approach it, then I can do this, this.getData, like that. Now, after the render method has happened, after this is on the screen, it's going to call component did mount. Component did mount will in turn call the get data function the same way as if I clicked on this button. So we can do that either way, it depends on what the needs are for your application. Do you need to wait for the user to do something? Are you waiting for a piece of information from the user? Maybe you need to go and get geolocation data. So you do a geolocation call. We do that inside of here. We could do geolocation, navigator.geolocation.getCurrentPosition, and then after that works, then you can do your fetch. So you do your get data after that. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it with click the button, it does the call. Keep it simple for this example. Inside my get data function, I'm gonna create a headers object and a request object. So headers, these are things like you have a custom header, you have an API key, maybe you've got uh, some authorization information that you need to send along with the request. So let's do that. I'm going to use JSON placeholder, this uh, great website, jsonplaceholder.typeacode. Um, here's the page, jsonplaceholder.typeacode.com, and they've got a whole bunch of different resources that you can get. I'm going to use comments just to get a big record set. I could do photos, get 5,000 records, take even longer. Um, and then for testing routes, most of them are get, but there's also options for put, post, put, patch, and delete. So you can try out these different things to see what happens when you get the proper result back. So these should always work for you. I'm going to just do a get request for comments just to keep this quick and easy. All right, so I've got my application up back into the code. Inside my headers, if I want to add a header, just say for the example, I need an authorization one. So h.append, append is a method that belongs to the header. And then there's two values, the name and the value. Authorization. And then if it is an authorization one, I need a, a bearer and a big, some big long key. So this would be some big long string value. And I'll just keep it so it sticks on one line. You want to add other headers, you can create your own custom ones. So let's create one called x-client. Uh, if you're going to build your own custom headers, it's a good idea to start them with this. This will be allowed through if you were ever doing this in the browser as well as in a mobile app. And let's put down Steve and friends. There we go. All right, so we have some headers. Now the request object, this is the thing that we're actually going to make the call with. It's going to need a URL and then an object with various options. Things like, hey, you want headers? So let's set the headers equal to that variable h. There we go. And you can do things like cores mode and there's a whole bunch of other things that you could set. Um, the only other one that I'm going to put in here is my method and that is get. So this is the way that I'm going to fetch it. My URL that I put inside of here, uh, I created my own constant base URL variable here. So it's a property of my component. This is the starter string, and then I'm adding slash comments to the end of that. So if I ever needed to do different calls to the same URL, I have this available and I can just append the rest of the URL on there. Okay, so we'll do our fetch call. The request object is what we pass in. Then we will get our response back. We gotta convert that into JSON. So this is the standard syntax for every fetch call you should make. 
you're always going to take it, convert it into a blob or text or JSON, whatever it is that you get back. So your response object, and then we take that. I know I'm getting JSON, so I'm going to call the JSON method, and then it's going to call this method right here. Now, I can, at this point, have a method that's going to load the data onto the screen. And I can either write all the code right here or just put the method name. And this is my preferred approach, is to just put the name of the method that I'm going to call. So inside my component, this dot, let's say show data, that's going to be the function. And for my catch, again, I'm just going to create a method for this. I'll call it bad stuff. So right here, we've got show data. This is going to accept the data from that call. So right here, we're calling this method, and the data that came back, the JSON data, is being passed to here. So the JSON data is coming here, and it's sitting inside this variable. I can now console.log that data. Now, I could add this to a flat list. I could um, add this to a scrollable area, but we're going to get to that in just a minute. Uh, show data at this point I have the actual data coming back so I, I have it in my app in my constructor I created three variables in my state one of them called data this is where I'm going to store all the information that came back from the server another one loaded if I want to display some sort of loading icon or animation or something like that this is going to toggle between true and false if it's false I'll show the loader if it's true, then I will not show the loader. For error, if it's null, I don't show any message. If it's anything other than null, then I'm going to display my error message. Now, let's come in here for my, my get data function at this point. Let's say that we are waiting on the user to click on this button before we do the call. I don't want loaded to be false and have the spinner displayed on the screen at this point. So I'm going to put this to true. Just say, okay, we're fine as we are, but when the user clicks on this, I'm going to set loaded to false. That's going to trigger the display of my loading message. So right here, this dot set state, I'm going to change the value loaded to false. That's going to trigger my loader. And it's going to trigger it by, if I come down here, I can have my loader message. And I will just check to see this dot state dot loaded. If that is true, I don't want to do anything. But if it's false, I'm going to display something on the screen. So if it's false, I'm going to put the exclamation mark in here, flip it. So when this is false, I'm going to do this. And let's just keep it simple. Text. And we'll write the message loading. There we go. So that's it. When I click on this, I get the loading message appear. Because when I clicked on here, the first thing this did was change loaded to false. So now the message appears. When the data comes back, I want to this dot set state loaded is now true again. Click loading and you see it appears and then disappears pretty quickly because I've got the data. It comes back pretty fast. Okay. So I have my loading message working for my error message. Bad stuff. We need that method as well. So bad stuff is a message or is a method, sorry. And this error object that comes back is going to be the message that we display. So we'll say this dot set state error is going to be this variable has a message property. That's the thing that we're going to display. Now, right now, error, if I ever get one, it's going to be stuck at this message, whatever this message is, until the next time an error happens. So I'm always going to be displaying a message. If I come down here, and I do the same thing, so this.state.error, 
So if it's anything other than falsy value, which it's going to be a falsy value right at the very beginning, because null is a falsy value. So if it's anything other than null, I'm going to get my message coming up here. Now, I don't want to display loading. I want to display this.state.error. And we'll add some style in here as well. I actually have a property that I created down here, err, styles.err. So let's put that in here, styles.err. OK. So if there is an error, it'll appear here. Now let's try to create one. So we'll misspell the word comments. And that should give us an error. I'm setting state to this. Uh, this error does not equal null. Actually, I think, yeah, it's probably going to allow us to do this. I'm not going to be getting an error message necessarily back. It will send me back something. So I'm going to come up here and let's just change the base URL. So this is going to give me an error. If I have the wrong URL, I'm not going to get a response back. I'll get a 404. So that will trigger this catch message. The catch message will call this method. This will update my state error. And then my state error down here. There we go. This should let me see a message. And there we go. So there's the error message coming back. Now, I could do something custom if I want inside of here, but for now, this is good enough. This is giving me something. So it was loading, and it failed. Now, I need to get rid of this message the next time I click on this button. So we'll come back up here. Where we set loaded false, we're also going to change this so that error is back to null. So I'll save that. Boom, there's the error. Now, it's going to give me this error every time now, but I want to be able to get rid of this as well. So let's do this part. Oh, right inside here. So loaded true. So at the same time that we're changing the error, boom, the loaded message or the loading message is now gone. We only have the error. So we've changed state from having we're in the process of loading something. Now I've got a response and I'm saying, hey, you know what? The response wasn't very good. Okay, and we'll do the same thing here. So inside of show data, we changed loaded to true. Inside the error, we changed loaded to true. Inside here, the error is this. And up here, when we're starting a new request, again, error is back to null. So we're all good. There we go. So our URL is fixed. I'm getting loaded and then displaying this. Now I want to actually display the information. So inside show data, this would be your final step. We've updated this to say, okay, we don't have it. So now let's take this and actually put this into state. So we're going to put it in here and data. There it is. This variable is the same name as this one. So I'm putting this one into this one, I could write data, data like that, but it's the same effect. With ES6, all I have to do is put the one variable name. Clicking here, I've got that data. I've now saved it in state. So the final part is, what do you want to do with that data? So we could down here say this.state.data and right inside of here, we'll do a map on it. So let's take a look. I've actually got it writing up here. So here is data. Data is an array. Inside the array, we've got a whole bunch of objects. All right, so data dot length is greater than zero. Then we can say this dot state dot data dot map. Inside of map, there will be a whole bunch of these comment objects. So let's actually call it comment. There we go. 
Oh, I'm not doing anything yet. Null is not an object. So yeah, we should check this dot state dot data. Okay, make sure it's not null and that the length is greater than zero. So this will fail initially. And then once it has something, we'll check that the length has something. And then we'll do a map writing out the comment. For each one of these comments, we will create a text field. And I have a styles property called txt, just like that. And inside of here, we're going to write out comment. There we go. Comment dot, oh, let's just do email. How about that? Comment dot email, give us all of those. So inside of our text field, comment dot email. There we go. All right, now get data loading. This is a mistake I make all the time. We don't want curly braces around what we're returning. We want to return an object. There we go. So just like that. Get data. And there we go. Now we get a warning about whenever you use map over an object, you're supposed to put a key inside of here like this. So we can say comment dot, I think there's an ID property. Let's check that. Yep, there's an ID. So we'll take this as our key. There we go. And doing that, we'll get rid of that error message. Get data. Boom. There we go. And this is our whole list. But I can't scroll because we're not using a scroll view or a flat list. So if you watched my previous videos on those, you will understand why this is happening. Come up here, we'll import scroll view. Save that. Oh, uh, what did I do? Line 45, what did I do? Yeah, scroll view. I think this is just my styles because I'm using the styles for the view. Yeah, there we go. It's because of that. So we'll say get data and there we are. And now I can scroll through all 500 of these emails. Now I'll leave it to you to <laughs> improve the formatting on this. There we are. Okay. And that's it. That's fetch. That's the full life cycle. That's fetching the data, handling errors, displaying something when it's loading, all the whole things together, the headers for authorization, anything like that. So I hope that helps you out. If you did find it useful, please share it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.